You can see sperm at home with a surprisingly inexpensive microscope setup. And by inexpensive, I mean less costly than the copay for a single doctor's office visit. And you can look at that cream as many times as you want. You just need to know what to get. But to be clear here, I'm not suggesting that you can do clinical level sperm counting by just having a decent microscope at home. There's way more involved with the procedures of counting sperm, you have to have specialty microscope slides, all of that kind of stuff. But if you're looking to just do some high level observation of sperm, you can totally do that with the right microscope. You are going to need a compound biological microscope, which is the kind that has these single objectives on a rotating turret. Your compound biological microscope is going to need a 40 times objective. I have been able to get away pretty nicely with just these 10 times objectives, but 40 times is gonna be kind of the, the max magnification that you're gonna want for this. Anything higher than that, and you're in the realm of things being so difficult to do that the, the benefit is just not there. You'll need a standard transmitted bright field light source with or without a condenser. The angle that the light hits a sample is really important here because sperm are almost completely invisible, so you need to crank up the contrast between the sample and the background. In this case, you do that by closing down the iris on the condenser. Closing down the condenser iris changes the angle of light that hits the sample. In particular, it makes it so that it goes at a very kind of straight on angle, which is what you need for maximum contrast. And if your microscope doesn't have a condenser like the Horizons Light Microscope, that's totally okay because optically, this is the exact same thing as having a condenser with the iris all the way closed down. You can kind of imagine it that, you know, the LED here is shooting out the light and it's just going straight up. It's not necessarily going into a condenser to then get angled up towards the sample. But there's a problem when you have the angle of the light coming straight onto the sample, and it's that it makes the floaters in your eye visible too, that it's just like overlaid over the sample that you're trying to look at, which of course makes it hard to focus on the sperm, which is actually what you're trying to look at. So why does this happen? Well, it's just optics. It's the exact same reason why the invisible sperm become visible when you have the light going kind of directly up onto it is also why the invisible floaters in your eye that you normally can't see become visible. To fix this, I recommend using a microscope camera. Microscope cameras are really good at doing edge detection, which helps to turn those normally completely invisible sperm visible. And camera sensors don't have floaters like how our eyes do. You can even just get away with using a relatively inexpensive USB eyepiece adapter camera. Any microscope camera will do a better job at this than what your eyes can do. But if you don't want to fits around with building this kit out yourself, check out the MicroSafari at home sperm observation kit. It has everything that you need to collect and look at sperm. We've optimized all of the components to work together for this application and give you all the information that you need to learn how to actually do this. You'd be shocked at how easy it actually is. At least I was when I first tested this out and realized that this was a kit we could make for people. You can go to microsafari.org slash sperm or click the link in the description below. If you'd like to see a walkthrough on how to set up a microscope and look at sperm, you can check out that video here. It's not just for this one, but also just generally for any other kind of microscope, at least the common consumer ones that you're gonna find out there.